welcome back to Thinking Kingdom Thoughts. I'm Tracy, and uh, this is Shannon, one of my dear friends, and uh, she's here today to do her testimony. Um, some of the questions I've already asked you before, um, we don't have to go over again, um, except for one, probably. Uh, what is your kingdom thought during hard times? God's always there. He never left, never leaves me, never has left me, and he'll always help me do everything I need to do. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That was going to be my other question was, what is your favorite, um, you know, yeah, your favorite always, scripture? That's always been my, my, the one I go to. Yeah. Do you want to open us up with prayer? <sighs> <laughs> Do you cover? I love to do this out, out, out loud. I can say it if you want me yeah, to. Yeah, would you? I'd rather okay. you would. Do you want to cover or not? No, I'm okay. Okay, I always do, just because of, you know, scripture and revelations about covering. So, excuse me, I should have already had this unfolded. Okay. Father God, we just come to you today as your daughters and... We ask that whatever is said today is going to benefit and glorify you and just continue to keep supporting us and not allowing us to do these things on our own. We just thank you for being there through everything, through every detail in our lives. You are an amazing God and we just want to thank you for that. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And that's why, folks, I don't say too many prayers on here because I don't feel like I'm good at saying them out loud. Um, God usually hears me rant. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I know you were reluctant thinking you didn't have much to share, but when we were sitting down here talking earlier, I mean, you're just full of a lot that I think can really help someone else. I really do. And what I said, you know, to maybe help when you're in these situations and you want to share your testimony and you don't want to leave anything out is start with your ages, you know, your earliest time that you can remember and when you felt God with you, you know. And so I hope that helped in saying that. Yeah, when you sent me the text about it, then mm -hmm. I thought, well, kind of bad, I guess. Just, that's always been my earliest memory is... I always felt unwanted, like nobody, nobody cared that what happened to me, short of, I, mean, I can't say nobody cared what happened to me. My grandparents did care. They just didn't want the, I guess, to raise more kids. I'm, I'm not sure what their didn't want to do part was. Um, so did you grow up with your parents or with your grandparents? My grandparents. Wow. Okay. My, I was adopted by them when I was three years old. So no wonder you felt like you were alone a lot. Yeah. Yeah. They, um, but the story is that they, they talked, my mother claims that she was coerced. She was kind of held prisoner in Hawaii, and she had no family, no but she had nobody except my dad. And um, they, well, if you'll sign these papers, signing the kids over to us so we can take care of them for their medical needs, because I needed, I had ear troubles and, and uh, tonsillitis all the time. I was kind of sick more often than I guess everybody was comfortable with. Yeah. And um, so, well, you we we have military. You know, they were in air. My grandpa was in Air Force, and they had military medical benefits and oh, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And my yeah. mom and dad had nothing. And uh, so, she claimed she was coerced so that if they saw if she signed the papers handing us over to my grandparents, that they would get her a plane ticket back to the mainland. Yeah, and she could come back to Oklahoma. And um. <clears throat> so were you born in Hawaii? Mm -mm. No. no, I was okay. born here in Oklahoma City. Yeah, we just moved a lot. Never had anybody any place stable. Um, 
I was born here. My brother was born in Dallas, Texas a year later. And my sister was born in, Can in Wichita, Kansas two years later. Yeah. To kind of, we just moved everywhere. Yeah. We were military too, so. No, no, no. My... This was my dad and my oh, mom. Oh, okay. This was my dad and my mom. Yeah. I was three. By, my sister was born by the time she signed the papers. Yeah. Well, right after because she came back and I guess they went to Wichita to live. And my sister was born there. Yeah. So they handed, she signed the papers and we got handed over and then no medical things were ever done to no. take care of us. I mean, like grandma and grandpa took care of us, but only kind of bare minimum took care of us. Yeah. I always thought I needed braces. Yeah. I begged for braces. Oh, but you're, I begged you for them. They're beautiful. They really do. I never thought they did. I never thought they did. Wow. They're crooked and gapped and all this and all I don't these people see had beautiful straight pretty teeth and I'm like I don't yeah my grandma and grandpa they could have gone for you know military benefits hardly no nothing yeah and they wouldn't do it wow I needed my tonsils out when I was small they wouldn't do it it wasn't until I was on my own that I got my braces and then I wore them eight years i think i broke the record i'm wearing i don't know ian might give you a good run for his for your money oh really he wore he started wearing braces when he was seven wow wore them for two years took them off and then put them on again when he was 12 or 13 i can't remember if he had braces when he met emmy or not yeah and i then, think he did i can't remember and then he got them off when he was 16 and a half or 17. Oh, maybe. Yeah, they would have met by then. Oh, they met when they were... Uh, he was 12. No, he 12. was 12. And she was what? She was 13. Okay. And But I can't remember if he had gotten them back on by that time. It seemed like all of his teenage years he wore them. But yeah. he didn't beg for them. Yeah. I begged for them. Right. I wanted braces, and they wouldn't They wouldn't do it. They, they always, bare minimum, did what needed to be done. For us. I've always said God raised me. My grandparents just put a roof over my head and clothes on my back and food in my stomach. And that was it. Yeah. That's all God used them for because they didn't I don't think they really they, they never acted like they wanted. When my aunt and my uncle would come and visit about once a year and my cousins would come with them, they got all of the attention. They I, I remember I got in trouble one time for I was walking down the road with my um, my cousin, and I don't even remember what happened. But I don't know if it was something she did or something she said or what. But I got yelled at oh, wow. and threatened that I was going to get my behind that beat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like thirteen or fourteen years old by then. Mm -hmm. I didn't get spanked in like that right. at that age. But if my cousins were around, they were priority. They were more important. They, I can see where my dad always felt like my interest was loved more than he was. But my mother would swear the other way around. Yeah. My family's a little dysfunctional. So was mine. You're not <laughs> I think alone. everyone's is. To I think so too. But when we're growing up, we think it's just ours. And yeah. it's our secret. And... Um, we lived that uh, with all that for a while until God just, you know, releases that for us. And, you know, he, he, and we work with him on that, you know. If we recognize it. You yeah. got to recognize it before he could do much of anything with you over it, I think. Yeah. But I spent all my, all my life thinking, yeah, they didn't really, they didn't want me. They didn't. I, I remember, I, I think my grandma is the one that showed it to me, a letter that my dad had written asking us, her to take us, me and my brother and my sister for a little while. And my grandma, that it was right after that, but my dad had you know these plans for us and, and I was going to grow up and get married. That was all he had planned for me. I was too dumb for anything else. Oh, no, you weren't. <laughs> you were, I sure didn't think so. You're a very intelligent woman with a lot of wisdom. I don't know about that. I'm kind of hard-headed, I think. But um, 
I don't know why my grandma would have ever shown that to me except to in some way see your dad doesn't want you yeah right that's what it sounds like because maybe you were saying I want to go back to my parents maybe and I know I know I did periodically we would periodically when when I was smaller we would go to um, my dad would like come get us for a birthday party or, or to have a, a our birthday not a party we never had parties but a, a birthday and like spend the day or whatever we were gonna do and I remember one time, I don't remember how old I was, and I don't remember, I don't think it was my birthday either. I think it was my brother's. <laughs> but we didn't even get out of the trailer park, the mobile home park, wow. before I was crying. It was We lived on the back, and, and he drove around. It was toward the entrance, and I was crying already so badly, he just made the circle and took me back home. Wow. I did not want to go yeah. at all with him. And I always wanted to stay with my grandma. Mm -hmm. I loved my grandma. Yeah. Grandpa was okay. Grandpa didn't interact with us, with us too much. But grandma, grandma was my friend. And, but she was also kind of manipulative and, 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 and not quite as nice as I remember her as a child. Yeah, when you Grandma's look back. Grandma's everything when you're little. Right, when, yeah. When she got older, it was like, I started seeing her a little more for being a human being mm -hmm. and with her flaws and stuff. And that's hard because we have them up on this pedestal. Yeah. Kids do that with parents too. And we try and do our very best, but we are human, you know, and when they see the human side of us, it, it puts a distance for a while. I think, I think, I think it does too. And you start seeing them where for, for their humanity. I remember when I was pregnant with Nina, I had grown up with story the story of how stupid my mother was out of this out of my grandma's mouth. Yeah. How stupid my mother was. When she was pregnant with you, she caught her shirt on fire. Oh my god. That's gosh. so stupid. She's such an idiot. Oh my god. Guess what I did when I was seven months pregnant with Nina? Mm. I caught my shirt on fire. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm like, I put it out, you know, and yeah. obviously I don't want to burn, uh, but I put it out and I stood there and I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm not an idiot. Yeah. I am not stupid. Yeah. I'm pregnant for the first time in my life. Yeah. And I'm like, I didn't realize how close my stomach was or how close that shirt was hanging because it was just a regular shirt and I yeah. was sticking out. You know, you're seven months pregnant, you're kind of showing at that point. Yeah, it's hard to get used to that change, yeah. you know. And I had already had enough, because I, I had, didn't have my degree in education yet, so I hadn't taken enough classes. But I knew enough about kids and children to know that's why children play in boxes. Oh. And under tables and things when they're a little bitty. They're learning their place, in the, their physical place in the world. Oh. And I'm like, I've never been pregnant before. And I'm wearing a regular shirt that I'm not used to hanging out. It's it's normally back here on me. Right. And it's hanging out over here. And that's the part that caught on fire. Right. Because it was hanging out further. And I didn't realize it. I'm like, that was my first realization that my grandma was kind of being a jerk to my mom. Yeah. Because I was my mom's first pregnancy. Right. She didn't know where she was in space. And and being seven months. Yeah. You know, you're, you're sticking out a little right. bit there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, hmm. So it made me stop thinking quite so badly about, because I grew up, uh, my mom and I had a big fight over the phone when I was like 16 and I told her because I wanted to talk to her. I had all these people I went to school with that said, um, you know, my mom this and my mom that. And I'm like, I don't get to use that word because even though I was adopted, mm -hmm. I did not grow up calling my grandma mom. Oh, okay. It was grandma. Yeah. Grandma and grandpa. It was not mom and dad. Yeah. My dad was still my dad. And she said that they didn't encourage us, didn't have us call them mom and dad because out of respect for my dad. She didn't okay. give a flying rip about my mother. Yeah. 
that my dad was her son. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, and I, and I realized at about 16, I'm like, I don't get to call anyone mom. I kind of would like to. That I, I miss that word in my life. Yeah. And I don't remember why I wanted so much to call her, but I did. And I called her, we came, made a trip up here to the city and I called her from my uncle's phone so she wouldn't know our phone number. Yeah. And um, we got in a big fight. And I remember, I don't even remember the con whole conversation, but I remember telling her that she wasn't my mom, that my grandma was my mom. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of the end of that. I, 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 well, I mean, we hadn't had a relationship since she left Utah when I was eight years old, mm -hmm. when her and my dad divorced. And I didn't talk to her again until I was 16 wow. with that phone call yeah. and fight. And then I didn't talk to her again until my ex called her when I got married, when, we, when I wound up getting married, um, out of rebellion. <laughs> um, because my grandma rejected him so badly um, he was looking for some kind of acceptance and he called my mother. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want you to do that, but I know you're going to do it anyway because you don't listen. You don't care what I want. Yeah. I, and he called her and we wound up up here living with her. Mm. And it wasn't my mother that was the issue with, well, as I rolled my eyes, it was him because he wouldn't, he wouldn't get a job and he wouldn't keep a job and it just made made him look bad in her eyes because yeah. he looked like a sponge. Yeah. And uh, she was the first one who noticed I was pregnant when I got pregnant with him because I was, I, when I got pregnant, we lived up here with her. Yeah. And I was sick on the couch and she walked in and looked at me and she said, you're pregnant. And I'm like, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. She was right. <laughs> I was. Yeah. There's that, a glow about a pregnant woman that I, I just, didn't feel like I glowed. I was laying on the couch sick. Yeah, yeah. But when I see that glow, I always try and recognize that to the girls at church because it's, you know, a lot of times they don't feel that way either. And that's yeah. usually the answer I get is, I don't feel like I'm glowing. I feel like I'm, you know, whatever. Like I'm just going to keel over and croak in a minute. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, um. So you yes. had you had been feel, felt like you were rejected by your parents mm -hmm. and your grandparents and mm -hmm. felt very alone at that point. Even yeah. friends, I didn't. I never felt like I had any friends. I remember, I was always. I've been this tall since. Well, I've been this tall, five foot eleven, since I was in the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Most kids are not five. No, I was five nine, and uh, yeah, yeah, I get it. That's gonna fall Especially in the sixth, category. seventh, and eighth grade, yeah. the boys are not getting their height yet. No, you know? they're not. So you're towering over them, and and I was the butt of a joke. Oh yeah, which is I, th I find a little bit ironic because this boy, his name was Steve, I think was the only that's the only thing I remember. But I was five six in the sixth grade. Yeah. That's as tall as most adult women. Right. I was 5'6". This boy hit me right here. At, and I was 5'6". I'm not the height I am now. But right. he, he hit me about mid-arm. mid, mid -arm, mm -hmm. And he asked me to go out with him. That was the way of, you know, we're going to be a couple. Right. And I, I don't, I've never cared what someone looked like. How big, I mean, that stuff's never done any, been any big deal for me. But, um... I thought, a boy paying attention to me. Mm -hmm. I hadn't had that since third grade when I had two boys fight over me. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, um, he, a boy paying attention to me. Yeah. And then the next day, he broke up with me. Yeah. And I found out that it had been a joke. Oh. And I, um, it, it hurt my feelings. And, I didn't have another boyfriend 
until Bill. Yeah. And at that point, I was, what was I? My 18th birthday. It was right after my 18th birthday. I was graduating, I was getting ready to graduate high school. So how many years is that? Yeah. Seven, six, yeah. seven? Yeah, something around something there. Something like that. And no boys had really paid any attention to me at all, ever. And I had a couple of friends that were girls that they were, they were good friends. So that probably helped get me through high school is that, that these yeah. two or three, I had, there was three of us. We were kind of like the four musketeers, mm -hmm. but one of them was kind of off over in her la la land somewhere because she was always chasing boys. She always had a boyfriend. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, a lot of times these guys are just afraid to go up and approach a girl. They would probably. like to have you as a mate, but just too scared to but they, make that stuff. You being, or at least me being a teenager, and I think most teenage girls are kind of, at least they were when I was growing up, is like they're so wrapped up in their set in themselves that they can't see past their own nose. They're just as bad as the boys. Yeah. You know, neither one of them can see past their own nose and and don't really understand the other one's perspective yet. And that's part of being a kid, a teenager. Yeah, so it just doesn't, the puzzles don't go together just yeah. quite yet. And you when know. you're, when you're in the, in that, you're not so willing to be forgiving of it. You think there's something wrong with you or you get mad at all at them. Yeah. Like one or it's one extreme or the other. Mm -hmm. As you, as I've gotten older, yeah, I, I, I recognize that stuff now. But, right. But, it's kind of like to redo my teenage years. Yeah, it would be nice to have that kind of knowledge. Yeah. And then we could go back to it. Hey, maybe we should listen to our parents more often. Hey, you know, <laughs> that might be a possibility. Maybe. Um, but when I, I developed this massive crush on Bill when I was like 16. Uh-huh. And... I developed the idea that if if I like him too much, I won't even be able to talk to him. Um, and I really want to be able to talk to him once in a while because yeah. he was in the youth. We were in the youth group. He was a year older than me, and and I needed to kind of be able to not be so weirdly so awkward shy. around. So yeah. I'm just he's going to be my friend. Mm -hmm. I'm going to look at him. He's going to be my friend. He's, I'm just going to work on being friends. And I watched him go through going going out with, going whatever, uh, uh, this same girl twice. And all she ever did was seem to break his heart. Uh. And I just, I'm like, wow, you're just a terrible girl for doing that. He's so nice. Yeah. And he's so kind and he's so sweet and all this. So just all of the fluff that teenage girls attach to okay. their teenage boyfriend. Yeah. And he just, we just, God worked, put us in situations where we wound up building a friendship. Yeah. And Which is a good, yeah, good start, a good that, place. That I, I feel like that's part of the reason that I pushed, not pushed, push is the wrong word, I emphasize so much with Ian mm -hmm. to focus on being friends with Emmy before anything else. Yeah. I tried to encourage the same with Adam. Mm -hmm. um, I tried to encourage the same with Nina. I tried to encourage with all of my kids, anybody that I like this one or this person or, you know, they didn't tell me everything that they, the lot that they liked or whatever. But even Zachary, when, when, cause he met, his wife, he met her in ninth grade of high school. Oh my goodness. And she was in 10th grade and, and he met, and he was in ninth. And um, when I found out they were, they liked each other, I'm like, focus on being friends. Yeah, you may be going together, but focus on being friends. Focus yeah. on being friends. Build a friendship. Yeah. And I harped on that real hard on Ian. And um, from the time he was little bitty, 
and so that that's what I did with Bill is is I'm just gonna be I'm gonna worry about being friends and God arranged it so that in pretty quick measure once he got past that last girlfriend the last time I remember we were at a youth conference when it happened and I'm like I told my best friend Kim I said I'm I'm gonna be there for him in case he wants to talk or needs to talk. I'm gonna I'm gonna press right. this friendship a little harder. <laughs> and God arranged it so I yeah. uh, my grandparents wouldn't let me get a driver's license or a car or anything like that when I was uh, old enough for it. And so the church bus had to come get me for church all the time. Yeah. Guess who drove the church bus? Oh, really? And I was far enough out that I was always the last one dropped off mm -hmm. and the first one picked up. Yeah. So we had plenty of talking time. Right. Visiting time. Yeah. And we we built a, a friendship, a stronger friendship, pretty fast. Yeah. And my senior year of high school, we spent, I spent a lot of my energy put building and pushing toward a friendship. He had a birthday um, at the end of December 31st was his birthday. Mm -hmm. Well, church, our youth group did a New Year's Eve hayride. Oh. And so I invited him. I was over at one of my other friends' house for that evening getting ready to go to the hayride. Or the, it wasn't just a hayride, but the the lock-in because it was, we were locked in the church. For oh, yeah. Uh, for the, for the night. night too. Yeah. yeah. And they, um, so she helped me. I made him a cake and got him a birthday present and everything and asked him to come over there because it wasn't too far from the church. I asked him to come over there before we went to the church to start that the evening's walk-in thing. Yeah. And so he had a birthday cake from me and presents from me and just a kind of a small private little three-person birthday party yeah and um yeah just just things like that where i made time to focus on being friends with him that's so i appreciate that that's so much wisdom in that there really is i mean and for you to have experienced it and allowed that to grow even though there was more you wanted yeah. you realized the importance of friendship first yeah. And then, um, so he did the same thing for me, or well, in cooperation with my friend, my best friend Kim, uh, for my birthday, three or four months later. Yeah. He took went bowling with us. Oh. And and bought me a present. Yeah. And and um, and a month later, we were serious, and we were dating. We we're going together. Oh, so but they say going together is not letting you win anywhere. Uh, that's true. <laughs> Our dating no. is so much different now than what it was. Oh then. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I spent that next year. He he changed colleges for me. Wow. I went to East Central, and he was going to Eastern Oklahoma Junior College in Wilberton. He moved over to my college. Wow! And and uh, so that we could be together all the time. Yeah, he was serious. Yeah, he was serious. Yeah. And um, we did the you know the dating thing, and you're in college now, and you see each other all the time, and you can do all of that kind of stuff. And we were involved in church and all. And he was getting so much pressure from the church family about when you gonna marry him. You know, we've been going together for like three months. Yeah. Officially. Yeah. Maybe a little longer from May to September or something like that. October. Um, when are you marry her? And he's like, we're not. We just barely started seeing, you know, serious here. We're not. Yeah. And he, he very nearly left. Just oh, quit school. Goodness. And was, he was talking about going to Alaska to work on the, I guess the pipeline up there yeah, was there. just starting to get built or whatever. This mm -hmm. was like 1982, 
81. I just graduated high school, 81. And he was talking about leaving. Mm. And so he was getting kind of distant from me. And, and I'm like, I just had a conversation with him. I'm like, and I'm bawling because when I get yeah. riled up, I start crying. Yeah, you would, of course. I mean, that's... Well, it's not... I, I didn't know what he was doing. I just knew he was getting distant. Oh, yeah. And that's when I started the conversation with him. Like, what's going on? Why are you, like, pulling away from me mm -hmm. and stuff? And so that's when he told me people were hounding him at church about when are you going to get married? When are you oh, going to get married? Wow. When are you going to get married? Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> Leave people alone if yeah. they haven't had a baby yet. If they're not, you know, just... Let them be. Yeah. They'll figure it out. Yeah. And I, we had a conversation in the, that night, and I'm like, look, I'm not doing that to you. I'm not yeah, you're pushing not you. I it. just I just want us to be together. Right. I'm enjoying, we're going to school, where we see each other all the time, other than when we're in class, you know, and, and I'm, I'm good with that. I'm not yeah. shoving you into getting married or anything like that yet. Right. And I guess that kicked him over because two months, three months later was Christmas and he bought me a promise ring for Christmas. Oh, how sweet is that? I kind of suspected it was coming because my best friend Kim went with me over Christmas break and because she was in Texas. She was at uh, Southwestern or someone's at God College going to school mm -hmm. and she was back up for Christmas and she and I went wedding gown shopping. Oh, that's so funny. I suspected it because he would he would do little things that made me go, you're thinking of something. Uh huh. And so, but I didn't say nothing because yeah. I wasn't gonna push. Right. Um. But um. When Christmas passed and everybody saw the ring on my finger and all this stuff. They started pushing even harder, but he knew mm. not to pay any attention to it, that we were doing what we wanted to do at the speed we wanted to do it, and I wasn't. Yeah. Back then, it was just a promise ring. Right. Promise rings weren't yeah, I had a promise engagement ring. rings. Right. That's the pre. But it was too fancy for a promise ring. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> um, so, um, when February rolled around, and he collapsed and died oh my god my world just kind of went into i just kind of went into a tailspin and didn't i mean i still functioned on the outside i still did the things i needed to do and but little things would happen that would make me feel like well you're not supposed to do that you don't deserve to do that you you're really not that bad off you really not hurt Oh my goodness, um, but you've just lost your partner, you know? Not according to the, everybody around me. Wow. My grandma, um, well, the day of the funeral, it was like nobody would leave me alone and let me be by myself any. And they, and, and I get that when people, someone dies, you don't want to leave the ones closest to them. You don't want to leave them by them by themselves too long, right? Because you think you know they're gonna they're they're gonna fall into depression or they 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 need your words or whatever. And I'm like, I didn't need their words. I needed I needed everybody to just let me be, leave yeah. me alone. And um, nobody would. And counseling didn't exist back then, right? Nobody went to a counselor. Well, you, you go, if you, if you're going to a psychiatrist. You must be really something wrong with you. Well, they used to call like, them shrinks. Yeah, shrink. It was a joke. And I don't even. know what that meant, really. Are they shrinking their heads? Shrinking your in? brain? What is or, that? Or, 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 I don't know. Yeah. But counseling didn't exist, so that was not even an option. And nobody would leave me alone. I remember one day, late in the day of the, the funeral, I tried to go outside to be by myself a little bit. Somebody followed me. It's like, just leave me alone. Let me be by myself for a little while. I just want to be by myself. Yeah. And they, nobody would would let me. And then there was one time my grandma, not too long after that, my grandma, I was in my bedroom with the door shut by myself because I just wanted to be alone and crying a lot. And my grandma came back there. She'd had enough of it, I guess. 
Oh. And she came back there. You don't have any right or reason to be crying and by yourself like this. I lost my mother, and that's way worse than what you went through. Oh my gosh! Like, Damn. Oh, okay. Wow. Whatsoever. So I wasn't. I wasn't even entitled to my own feelings, and nobody. Nobody seemed to care how I felt and what I needed, and just to be able to get through however long I needed to get through it. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, I didn't matter. Another example. I tell you, we've got a lot in common because when I was told that my dad had passed away, I went into the shower because we were supposed to meet up that day. And in my mind, I just still wanted to meet up with him. And uh, the one who was yeah. I was engaged to when I came out of the shower, he smacked me in the face. And um, I guess that brought me back to my senses again that I just didn't have a right to be emotional or anything. You it was know? only your dad. Yeah. And yeah, I yeah. get it. That's hard to live through those things. Yeah. And I, I mean, nobody knew or realized, but I had a lot of regret too from the day that he died because I... <laughs> We had been in the library on the university campus there, and I wrote poetry back then. And I had written something, and we were trying to study. I had much studying going on. Wasn't that interested in school. He had just fl majorly flunked a test because he wasn't even interested in the subject that he was majoring in. And he just, he, he said, I'm older than the test. I just flunked. I'm older than the score. I just got on this test. Oh, wow. He was ready to quit school. Yeah. He was just ready to be done with it because he wasn't, he didn't feel like he was seeing any success, I guess. Yeah. And he was just ready to be done. So we weren't getting much studying done in the, in the library. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to go to youth group that night. And so we were just kind of killing time until we could go to supper and then go to youth group. Yeah. And, um... I had, I guess I had my writing with me, and he decided that he was bored with trying to study, and he snatched my notebook that had my poems in it. Oh, wow. And I, I, had, I guess we had been talking about it. I said something about having written something for him, and he said, I want to read it. And I said, uh-uh, you can't read it right now. You can't, I'm not ready for you to read it. You can't read it right now. Yeah. And he had even attempted to write some poetry for me. Oh. And early, early on. Right. So, and it was really sweet. And um, it, he snatched this paper mm. and went to run in through the library. Yeah. And I was just mortified. And I was chasing him, trying to get the paper back because I didn't want him to read it. Right. And he ran in the bathroom. Oh, he did the bathroom he trick. He did the bathroom trick. And I'm like, I plopped down on the stairs and I was I can't, okay, I guess he's going to read it. Yeah. And about three or four or five seconds later, he came out the door and he said, handed me the paper and he said, you have to promise me that I can read this in a week, within a week. Yeah. And I said, okay, fine. All right. <laughs> and snatched it back that was from so him. Sweet him to come and back he died that night. Oh, no. Because we got a phone call that said, youth group's canceled. Um, there was some problems and youth group got canceled. We said, we said, oh, okay. So we went and played basketball or he went and played basketball at the gym instead with a bunch of guys from the dorm or whatever. And we were just kind of goofing off that evening. And if we'd been at youth group, he might not have died. Mm. Cause he, yeah. So what caused his death? He had a diagnosed heart murmur. He, he he loved football, and when he was in high school, he wanted to play football, and they had to have physicals, and they discovered it when they did the physical. Mm -hmm. So he never got to play football in high school. Wow. But he was always around the football team. He was like, he became their manager mm -hmm. instead of being able to play. He just continued to be a part of the activities. Yeah. But he played tennis. He, he was still active, very active. Yeah. And so he was on some medications, and um, we he 
the the healing movement of right prior to the name it claim it movement and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff it was got real big yeah there was about a, that time yeah, yeah the the late 70s like, up into the early 80s charismatic so. move or something yeah. like that yeah. yeah and somebody had prayed over him he believed i don't know if someone had prayed over him or they had prayed for him or whatever and he was believing that god had healed him yeah and he to see him move around you you'd never dream he had any kind of problem like i said he played tennis yeah he played softball and baseball at church yeah. and with, with the church team and he he ran and i mean he was very athletic yeah and um him and his sister and I, or his sister and I had to even sit on him one time and force the medicine into his mouth. Oh, so he, he was the one that take would, it. Because back then, this was before they started saying, and it was because of this kind of stuff that they started saying, you get it verified with a doctor first. You can't just sit back and go, God healed me, God healed me, God healed me, right. and not get it verified. Yeah. That's not smart. That's right. Yeah, they and weren't you saying want that, that. So that you can show that as your testimony. You want to be able to say, "Look, here's the before, here's the after." Yeah, and but now. then back then they didn't do that. That was a lack of faith. Wow. If you had to go, that if you had to go get it verified, it never entered anyone's mind. My sister suffered for years with gallbladder because of that situation. Yeah, if so if, if you that. went and checked it or anything like that, it was a lack of faith. Yeah. It was that big faith movement, name it, claim it, mm -hmm. that rolled into name it, claim it stuff. But when people started dying because things weren't healed, right. for whatever reason, God does what he does for yeah. whatever reason he does. Um that's when it started coming up. You go get it verified by your doctor before you stop taking your medicine. Let the medicine make you sick. Yeah. But you don't stop taking. Well, we we would sit on him and force the little teeny pill into his mouth because he wouldn't take it. Yeah. He, that was a lack of faith to keep mm. taking his medicine. And uh, so he um, that night he was just playing half court basketball and with a bunch of guys from the dorm. And he wasn't even running full court, full of half court. They were playing like, you know, yeah. full court. Uh -huh. and they were playing half court on the side here. And he wasn't even doing the half court run back and forth playing basketball. And he was on the team that didn't have on shirts. And I started, I remember sitting there going, why is he getting so red? Well, he was kind of pale anyway. And um, blonde headed, blue eyed, kind of pale. Right. And he was turning really red and i'm like why is he turning so red because he's really not playing that hard yeah and along about the time i started realizing that and thinking that in my head he collapsed on the court wow and the doctor said later he was he was already gone oh as soon goodness. as he so he has like he a massive down, heart attack yeah then. something like that happened yeah. he never clutched his chest or anything like that he just collapsed have you seen the after, the video of the football player? I was seeing it last night on the news. Uh -uh. There's a video of a football player. I don't know what team it was or anything, but there he the he was part of a tackle or something, and they everybody got up off the field, and were they were going back to you know positions like like any fo like football games go and. I didn't even catch it the first time I saw it, but the guy had gotten up. He was checking the guy and helped another guy stand up. And he stood there for a second and then whack, down he went. Yeah. And I think I saw a headline today that said he died. Mm. It was the same type thing. He just went down. No, no clutching heart, no, no warning signs whatsoever. He just, other than the turning red. Yeah. He just went down. And That's the way my father-in-law went and, and my dad. And um, they both, their heart just exploded. Yeah, that's was what, what it was described to yeah. me. Yeah, see, they, they didn't tell me that. They just said he was gone by the time he went down. Yeah. And I remember 
you know, all of the hullabaloo around him, everybody trying to do CPR. I think three, three boys were recognized by the university mm -hmm. after we got back or after I got back um, for having tried to work so hard to try and save him, waiting for the ambulance to get there and everything. And um, mm. I just remember standing there going, please, God, let him be okay. Please let him be okay. Please let him be okay. Yeah. And because I had all these dreams of this was the only, the, he loves me. Right. I, I have someone, someone who's chosen me. Yeah. And please let him be okay. Please let him be okay. And I realized after we left the hospital and he wasn't coming out of the hospital, um, he is okay. He was with God. How much more okay can you be? Right. Yeah. He just wasn't with me. And so some part of me kept going that what I was saying earlier, he, who wouldn't choose heaven over being here? Yeah, but you know, the anger, like I said, is a part of mourning, you know, that's yeah. one of the stages we go through. And, and I, but I think I wasn't allowed to go through that. Nobody would let me. Nobody would let me cry. Nobody would let me talk to them. Uh, Nobody would let, nothing. I was totally alone. Yeah. All I had was God. And, and like I said earlier, my grandma, you don't have any right to feel that way. I lost my mother. She was emotionally abusing you. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Probably. But I still love my grandma. Oh, sure. I mean, they're not going to be perfect people, but oh, no. we still love them. I don't yes. think she knew any better. I, I, I just don't think she knew any better growing up in the home that she, because she was one of a, 11 or 13, 11, 11 brothers and sisters. And she was like smack dab middle. Mm -hmm. And we know how the middle child is. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think one way, the way I was able to forgive my parents was, um, that they did the very best with what knowledge yeah. and resources they had at the time. That era was so different than mm -hmm. what what it is now. You know. They, they I call it floating through life. Mm -hmm. Where you just kind of do what needs to be done and that's really kind of all you know to do. And like I said, counseling didn't exist. Nobody talked about doing anything like that. You were just and the and my grandparents were the Pick yourself up by the bootstraps and keep going. Right, yeah. And I still do that to myself, but I am more willing to turn inward and look and try and sort out my garbage mm -hmm. because I know I, I fully, well, I don't know because I'm not God, but I fully believe that if you hang on to all of that stuff, it will kill you. Yeah. It'll, you'll wind up with cancer. Yes. You'll wind up with disease. You'll wind something. It, it'll kill you. Yeah. You Unforgiveness is one out. of the worst things yeah. we could have because that really tears at us too. I think yeah. so. So I just kind of started doing, I think my, my anger because it, nobody let me talk. Nobody let me go through those stages mm -hmm. of grief. I think, I didn't realize I was doing it, but I think I got mad at God. Even yeah. though I kept talking to him, mm -hmm. I kept I kept going to church and I kept being with my friends and Bill's best friend tried to step in and save me. Mm. And that didn't go very well at all. Yeah. Um and I wound up by myself again. So I, I think that's part of the reason I wound up having the dreams of uh, it, that that Bill left me on purpose, and he was hiding from me now. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. He was hiding. I I'd get close to finding him, or or somebody be having a conversation with him on the telephone. But no, I couldn't talk to him, and I could I could never find him again. I could never get back to him. Yeah. And he didn't want to be with me, so he was hiding from me. Mm. And um. <laughs> I kind of went rebellious and I remember flat out telling God you took away the only person who's ever gonna love me yeah. 18 years old and I thought my world was I thought life was ended yeah. there was no hope ever well I had my whole life nobody wanted me and yeah. this one I figured you know okay well you took him away uh, 
I am going to have kids. Uh-huh. Yeah. We, we, as, yeah. If I, as if the stuff we do to our brains. Yeah. Anyway, I said, that's what I told God. I said, you took the, you took away the only man who's ever going to love me. I'm just going to, I am going to have kids. I'm, I'm just going to marry the first one who comes along and stays long enough to marry. Yeah. And God said, okay. Yeah. You just took it out of my hands. Yep. Yeah, I just took it out of his hands and he's going to let me, he's going to let you do what you insist that you're going to do. Yeah. Good or bad. Yeah. So sometimes when we feel alone or feel that we are alone, do you think we've done it to ourselves like in that situation? Yeah, yeah. because we, we can mouth that we're trusting God, but the condition of our heart may not be yeah. matching. Right. And sometimes... Sometimes I don't, I don't think I realized the ramifications of what I was doing. Yeah. I think I was acting out of the anger that nobody would let me express and the hurt and the upset. And yeah, that's why it's yeah. so important to let people talk. Yeah. Let them talk. Let them get their junk out. Even if they have to, because they say nowadays, I don't know if they were saying it then or not, but with the grieving process, sometimes you're going to back up and redo a step yes you'll, yeah, you'll go through three, three or four of the steps and then all of a sudden anger hits you again right and you need to be able to walk through this and you can't walk through it in 24 hours no sometimes it takes a long time yeah. and i i i did exactly what i said and god let me do exactly what i said i was going to do yeah and I married the first one who stayed long enough to actually marry because I was going to have kids. Right. I adore my children. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, you got wonderful, wonderful kids. <laughs> they've, I think they've all, you know, uh, Adam's been on here and and will be coming on. Yeah. Um, I think Nina's been Nina, on here once. And Nina has been on here too. Yeah. And, I, and she's coming Anna back on. on um, they're coming out I think next in a few weeks okay I couldn't remember if they had been on here together or not um she's been on here Emma has yeah but Ian hasn't no I don't oh, think boy. he has yeah um so but we got five more out there that right well we're working on that God's working, God's working on, on that, that. Yeah. God's working on that but um So you had decided you were going to have kids no matter what. No matter what. And I married him against everybody I knew. Their their wishes, their desire. I think they I think the friends that I had, the ones who who um were trying to help me, I think they just didn't know how to help me. And they didn't know what to do um, to help me get through what I was going through without looking like they were trying to take control of my life. And I kind of rebelled against that, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. They wouldn't know, really. That might have no. been their first experience with death. Well, you know, even, even, were young. even if it wasn't, because, well, I, I'm, the ones I'm thinking of is a kind of mom and dad couple that had been a part of my life and I really, really loved, um, and I still love them. I just don't ever get to see them. Mm -hmm. Um, that happens. We get busy with life. Sadly. Uh, they, I think they wanted to help. I remember Linda sitting in the floor with me trying to help me talk through and, and realize where my pain was really coming from. Yeah. And could see what my ex was doing to me. He wasn't my ex then, and I, but I don't want to, I don't really want to use his name. Um, what he was actually, I, maybe not what he was actually doing, but just that it was going too fast. It was, things were happening too fast and, and that it needed to slow down and that I was probably reacting out of still my hurt because I, he, when I met my ex, it was like seven or eight months, nine, ten months 
Bill died in February, and I think I met my ex somewhere around December. Um, so like 10 months, I was still wearing Bill's ring around my neck. I still had his engagement ring on my finger. Yeah. I hadn't taken any of that stuff off. Even though his, his best friend had tried to step in and help me, mm -hmm. and I took those things off briefly while we were, while we were dating, mm -hmm. um, when we broke up, I put them right back on again. Yeah. And I did the same thing when I got divorced. Yeah. Because I went through, I went through all of, I got married and I had the kids and all of that stuff and endured abuse and everything from the get go. Um, but you don't get divorced over that. And I, I didn't, I fully believe back then that you don't get divorced over anything except actual adultery. Yeah. So I, I felt the same way. Um, even the, the cheating on me within the first seven days of getting married was it full on cheating? So oh, wow. I didn't get divorced. I didn't do that. that. Yeah. yeah, I did. Oh, I'm so sorry. And um, wow, so that's a lot to deal with. It's such a young age. Well, it was kind of crappy back then. But yeah. I, I rebelled. Look what I did. God said, "Okay." Oh yeah. And I didn't check with him if this was a, a good person. I just, I always had kind of had the philosophy of the float through life. Maybe the that floating through it would be better to ask like for forgiveness so later instead of permission now is that like no me... it was more i don't want to screw something up so if i if i know too much about it i'll overthink it god just help me do it and that's oh. the way i felt like bill was brought into my life was mm -hmm. if i work too hard at this at trying to make it happen i'll mess it up so just let it happen yeah and um so I never even thought about going, now, God, is this one okay? Because I'd said, I'm going to marry. The first one comes along, stays long enough to marry. Yeah. And God said, okay. Yeah. Um, didn't ask, about, didn't have any qualifications of what kind of person it was. He was shorter than me, mm -hmm. which deep down, I mean, Bill was shorter than me too, but only by two or three, two inches yeah. or so. My ex is... 10 inches shorter than me. Yeah. Which doesn't bother me. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't bother, bother me, me either. Yeah. But it, at the same time, it was kind of on the back of the burner that I wanted to be at least as tall as me. Yeah. I just didn't care anymore at that point because my rebellious statement, that's what I cared about. I'm at least going to have children yeah. because then if I have children, I won't be alone. And yeah. I don't think I thought about that part of it. Um, because again, I was always alone. I was always by myself. I never had friends that stayed long. Even my best friend, Kim, she had her own life. She had the, her own thing she was doing. She was in Texas going to school and, and friends, she had friends down there and she didn't come back up here to McAllister. And he, I mean, this, that wasn't her parents, her mom, no, her mom was already gone, but her dad was still here. And I mean, her life wasn't here yeah. and I couldn't build my life around a friend anyway. Yeah. I, you get married and build a life. So if I had children, I would have them to love all the time growing up. And if I loved them enough, then they'd love me. Oh. I'm old. I'm so sorry. So that's, that's what was going on in my head. And that's, but you don't think of the full ramifications of all of it. And yeah. like you might meet the wrong kind of person. And abuse wasn't talked about back then. No, I think they had just probably started getting to my sister's place. Because I think we're about the same age. Uh, getting little together, small ones. And they were very discreet about it. Because they didn't want people to know where that was. So that the abuser couldn't come in and hurt well, the Well, even further. laws. I, I remember watching a TV movie when I was uh, 16, 17 years old, somewhere in there. It was a TV movie. It was a, about a true story about a woman who had escaped an abusive marriage. And um, the guy kept her, he kept harassing her. Yeah. And she called the cops. 
and the cops go, we can't do anything. Yeah, they couldn't. We, we can't do anything. We, no. If he isn't physically coming in and physically attacking you so that we can get him on assault or whatever, yeah. we can't do it. He wound up killing her. And yeah. that was the story. As is good that as she, the paper it's written on. Yeah. yeah. And and he, the guy wound up killing this woman. And the cops hadn't been able to do anything to stop him. And he'd given, been giving harassing her, stalking her. I think it's a lot different now. Oh, it? yeah. And, yeah. The, and that's why they made the movie. Was That was one. Of, that was the story, supposedly, that started changing laws so that things could be done to keep abusers from yeah. getting close enough. They didn't have to kill them before something finally happened to them. Yeah. They didn't have to kill the, the spouse before something finally happened to them. So that's, I remember here, that story, that movie stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And and then I wound up in that, that kind of a, a, a marriage. Yeah. And um, he just demonstrated over and over how I wasn't good enough. And I wasn't... Yeah, I didn't matter, and that put on this face of I'm a minister, so I'm going to stand up here on this stage and I'm going to sing a wonderful song and 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 pray for people and all that. But yeah, behind closed doors at home, we were yeah, no wonder getting, you, yeah, you know, beat up. If uh, I got kicked in the stomach when I was pregnant with Matthew, oh I um, I that's I, so scary because you got. The rest of your pregnancy. Yeah. To wonder if, if the baby is wrong. okay. Yeah. And it's it's a horrible thing that, to live with and to have gone through. So the uh, even the um, um, the last my last pregnancy while well, because we split up before Zachary was even born. Um, but we couldn't get divorced because I was still pregnant. They wouldn't let us get divorced until after my son was born. But he, he was under so much stress from the pregnancy because of the stress that Lonnie was putting on me that Zachary, um, I wondered if some of, because he had some small issues when he was born with jaundice. And I know that doesn't have anything to do with abuse or stress or any of that kind of stuff. But in my mind, I wondered if some of that played on why he, he spent a week in an incubator. I mean, you might, then, yeah, you might be onto so something I, that well, I've discover seen things, later on. I yeah, mean. I've, I've seen things that talk about and heard others, so I know the science is, is, is starting to be talked about that stress while you're pregnant affects the baby. Good my and mom bad. always said that. And why my one brother, um, he passed away. Um, he had... Um, issues mentally he was um psychotic at times Aww. not all the time but there was times when he was psychotic and he would think people were after him and you yeah. know and listening in his walls and just out of the out of his head and um she had cried because she did not the baby before him was breech and um it was a horrible delivery that she went through and it scarred her. And when shortly after she was pregnant again, you know, there the so only she way stressed to like, over that that whole time. Yeah, and so um, you know, she thought that that was why he was had some mental issues. Yeah, it was because of that. Well, I think, and I think sometimes the stress of all of my pregnancies, and I've said this, I've said this on something recently too. I just wonder if that made made my made all my kids a little more high strung, that they worry a little more, that they mm. I, I don't know I, yeah. I I don't know it's all I bet you say it so come now. up with that before too long to maybe. confirm it yeah but um maybe they'll do some you know studies on that they might um. <laughs> I guess that's kind of a sidetrack. I'm sorry. 
No, no, oh. not at all. I mean, we just talk about what comes up. That's what we, that's what we do. But um, because things weren't great in the marriage, but I didn't think I could leave because he hadn't actually committed adultery. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of put, and, and, and I think too, be part of my rebellion was I'm going to have kids. Yeah. I put everything into my kids. Yeah. And <laughs> I, I, I had to tell one of them one time that uh, I had to admit that to them, that I had placed them on all of my kids on a pedestal and that my whole world, even though they were becoming adults, had been, a, my whole world was about them. He, this one was just barely an adult. He just barely become an adult and was um, not living at home anymore. But I had to admit to him, I, I had you on a pedestal. I had all of you on a pedestal and you don't belong there. Yeah, I, it's hard to go through that um, where you sacrifice, basically, like in the Bible with, yeah. you know, um, Isaac and, yeah. you know, what all went through there with Abraham and that struggle. I think we all finally go through that at some point in time with our children and take them off of the pedestal. Because we've spent our whole lives, all of their lives, taking care of them. And if we're invested as a parent at all, I think our children become really important to mm -hmm. us. Yeah. And and we hang out with them and and do everything with them and they can become more important than they ought to be. Yeah. And I think God God sits back and he waits patiently. Yeah. But we're really worshiping the child instead of God. Instead. Yeah. And and I, and sometimes I don't think we quite realize that. And at that point, God had shown me that that's what I was doing and it needed to stop. Oh, wow. And so then there you are feeling alone again and trying to adjust to that new. To, to my children being adults. And, they, and I still had children at home. Mm -hmm. I still had kids I was raising. Yeah. And, um. I didn't need to do the same thing to them that I was doing to the ones that were already mm, adults. Yeah. And being hurt by stepchildren that I wanted desperately to love, but oh, they yeah. didn't want they didn't want me like mm. that. And So how long was it after you ended this with uh with my with the father uh the my children's ex. father, yeah. Um, well, when, sorry, thank you for getting me back on track. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, when we divorced at 13 years of married, and when we divorced, I didn't have to mourn the divorce. I didn't have to mourn the losing the marriage. Yeah. I found myself right back dealing with Bill and having lost him oh. because I had never yeah. dealt with it. Wow. <laughs> Carried that around for an extra 13 years, shoving it down, sho shoving it away, and not because my ex was so jealous of my having loved someone so much yeah. th and then lost that person. Yeah, and he could never live up he to could that. Never, yeah. He felt like he could never live up to that. And but I had hitting you wasn't care. right. No, you know, the no. The way he handled it wasn't correct. No. Um, and he, but he didn't attempt to either. He kept, he kept trying to just shove it under the, force me to oh, shove yeah. it under the carpet and the, and get rid just like it. And no, he didn't want it to have existed. Yeah. And, um, so, so then you we, put the rings back on. No, the, I didn't. I, so after the divorce. I gained I gained too much weight and couldn't wear them anymore. I didn't have the rings anymore anyway. I had I had his class rings still. Mm -hmm. But his fingers were smaller than mine, so I'd always worn it on a chain around the, around yeah. my neck. 
um, even when I was skinny. Um, so, but the wedding, the, uh, not wedding ring, the engagement ring that he had given me had been stolen. We, our house had been broken into, our apartment had been broken into and robbed. And that was one of the things they took. Yeah. Was that engagement ring. So I had, I, that was when Nina was just a little baby mm -hmm. that that had happened. So I, I didn't have any rings to put back on or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't had, um, wedding rings because he sold them. My ex sold them not too mm -hmm. long after we got married because we were desperate for money. Yeah. But he'd gotten a ring for himself. Anyway. Uh, Cause girls chased him. It's, oh yeah. Of course yeah. I would. Yeah. So, but I found myself going back and dealing with Bill's death. And at that point, counselors existed. So because of the divorce, I put myself in counseling and I put the kids in counseling too, because I felt like they needed to be able to vent and maybe mom wasn't the best one to vent to because mm -hmm. Nina was only 11 and Josh was, was 10 and Matthew was only five or six, something like that. And even Adam was only three that I hoped maybe counselors could help yeah. him figure out if he needed any to let anything out, get anything out. Uh -huh. So I just, I wanted them in counseling to see if something would, if they needed any help, but I knew I needed some. Yeah. And so I put myself in counseling and spent some time talking to somebody about all of it from right. the marriage all the way back to Bill having died and kind of worked, worked through a bunch of that kind of stuff and, and, Kind of got rid of it and didn't have to and the only reason i cry now is because if i cry about something is me like i said feeling alone again because now i'm divorced yeah the ultimate of i don't want you right right <laughs> yeah that's, that's and right. it was through all of that that i mean i i still knew god was with me yeah because even in the marriage because things would come up that spoke to what whatever situation I was going through at the time or or um and usually it was stuff on TV it was not generally anything in in church that was said or anything nobody ever seemed to recognize what was going on I I would even and a lot of people that go through domestic violence they will cover up for the abuser yeah and I even found myself doing it even though I was in the process of splitting up with him I mm -hmm. still found myself covering for him yeah we really believe it's either our fault or we believe the lie that um it will never happen again i yeah. promise you it'll never happen again yeah you know and when we finally split up it was over him admitting that he finally committed adultery and i said i'm done yeah red line crossed i'm finished yeah because that that was the seventh or eighth time mm-hmm even though that was the first admitted to going all the way. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm done. I'm finished. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm done. Yeah. And I covered for him because I forgot I had a bruise on my face. Mm. And I went across the sidewalk to a neighbor and I'm asking for help about something. I don't even remember what it was, but I knocked on the door and they opened it and got shocked with my black face yeah and that I had forgotten was there I'd never knocked on their door and I blamed my son Adam for it because he was like two and I said oh he just reared back and hit me with his oh, head no. so yeah. I blamed my child for it to cover yeah <sighs> yeah so, I know we're just we're very lost sometimes when we take that step away from God and we don't you know we distance ourselves and you don't even realize no. that you've done it or you're, you're not it's not that you don't realize it's that you don't comprehend mm -hmm. the magnitude with what you of, of what you've done yeah and God works with you where you are to bring you back yeah, he really does, doesn't he? he? He does. He does it gently. He does it slowly. He doesn't yank you. Uh, and 
he'll bring you gently back. I've, I've even had him do things like, like um, when I was, t I don't handle change very well. Mm -hmm. I don't handle it well at all. Uh, and I've had him give me years and years of warning. This is coming. You need to start preparing up here oh, yeah. for it. Um, this is coming. Um, when I was pregnant with Joshua, um, he was three weeks late. Oh, wow. Uh, he was three weeks late. And so they wanted to do an ultrasound to make sure he was okay. Yeah. And they walked, they, they had me in the room to do the ultrasound and they did their little thingy. And on the screen, um, I had kind of learned to look at those things and what I was looking at. So I knew what I was looking at and, and everything. And for some reason, the tech got up and left. So I was in this dark room looking at my son on this lighted screen. And Yah told me, this one will suffer, su this one will struggle with homosexuality. I'm like, no, 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 no. Right. No, I didn't want to hear that. No, yeah. no, no, no. He gave me warning again when Joshua was about three. And again, when Joshua was about nine or 10. Wow. That crushes a parent. And it, and I'm like, no, 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 no. Instead of me praying for my son, mm -hmm. I stuck my fingers in my ears and no, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. So I still had a problem with rebellion. Yeah. That, that no, I just want my life to be perfect. I want everything to be happy. I want everything to go well. I want everything. No, 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 no. So he avoidance knew, like, means we don't have to deal with it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Until you get smacked with it. Right, because it's still gonna <laughs> it's come. Still gonna yeah. Come. yeah. Um, he did the same thing when I was pregnant with my son Zachary. Mm. He said, not the exact same thing. He said. Um, just whispered to me, your sixth one, you're going to lose. Oh, no. Well, I was getting divorced at that point. Yeah. I'm like, there ain't going to be no sixth one. Yeah. There's not going to be a sixth one. I'm, nobody will ever want me. I'm planning on being by myself the rest of my life. and just be me and the kids. Nobody's, I'm not going to get married again. Yeah. I had Bill. He died. And I chose this. And we see how that one's going. Yeah. Uh, I ain't never getting married again. Yeah. So I took it, if you have a sixth one. Yeah. And I'm like, eh, that ain't gonna happen. When I got pregnant in 2001, I was thrilled. Because Greg and I were having a baby. Uh -huh. And on 9-11, I lost it. Oh, wow. And I remember when the doctor told me that there wasn't a baby there anymore. I, I must have scared everybody in the, in, the, uh, uh, in the OB office. I had to have. Yeah. I can't imagine that I didn't. I hope the room was soundproof because I screamed. Yeah. I was screaming, crying because it came back to me. I told you you were going to lose your sixth Oh, time. man. But how many years did he prepare me for that? Zachary was seven at that time. Yeah. Six, six, seven years old. And he gave me six years, six, six, seven years warning that that's what was going to happen. Yeah. I um, didn't take it seriously. Right. Um, so, uh, even in our rebellion, God looks, you can't rebel against something that you're not serious about. At least I don't think you can. I, in my own life, in my own walk, that's the way it seems to be. That how do you rebel against something that you're not serious about? Yeah. So. Right. That passion just wouldn't be there. Uh, yeah. You, would, you wouldn't care. You're not rebelling. And yeah, you can say humanity's rebelling against God. Yeah, we are. I guess. That's a way to say it. But I feel like my rebellion was, rebellion is, in my mind, a 
absolute choice. If oh, you're no. not, if you're, if you don't know about God, if you've not been raised around God, if you think everybody's using God as a crutch, I, I'm, I, I don't quite see that as, as rebellion on the scale of right. But rebellion. when you do, yeah, when you know better and you go against it, yeah. That's that's pretty blatant. Yeah. The other is is almost a rebellion of omission, or rebellion maybe even just too strong of a word for it. But I'm a word person. I'm an English teacher, uh, maybe so I delve more into definitions. It, it very well could have just been avoidance too, and yeah. not rebellion. You know what I mean? No, mine was, a, a, for everybody else, avoidance. For me, yeah. it was rebellion. Yeah. I knew what, I, I I was flat out saying, I'm taking the reins of my life because you're not doing a very good job, God. Mm. I don't feel loved. I don't feel wanted. I don't feel, and I'm going to make sure that I have children because children will love me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've got five of them that, yeah. Mm. They, they don't, they don't, they don't talk to me. They don't. They don't, only if they need something or if they have to or, or, and I can excuse some of it from mm -hmm. some of them because I think, I, I feel like I know why they're doing what they're doing. It's not actually against me, mm -hmm. but I don't have them on the pedestals that they used to be on, so it doesn't. It doesn't feel like it's tearing my heart out of my chest the way it used to feel. Yeah. When they would smart off at me or 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 just be ugly to me or whatever. So yeah. God has continually shown himself to be ever present with me, like that sixth grade little girl going, You're my only friend. Yeah. <laughs> you're my only friend and you're not ever gonna leave me because you in almost sixty years <laughs> Going by age, he's not left me. He's always been right there, holding my hand. I I I have lost it now, but I had a a, a little plaque thing that I bought when I was eighteen, nineteen years old. Um, that it was footprints. Everybody knows the poem, oh, yeah. footprints. Yeah, it was a, I had a real beautiful plaque of a beach. And Yeshua walking with some with this person on the beach, and you can see the footprints and the single file footprints, and the sky in the background is really pretty. Ocean, it was just a gorgeous plaque. And but I always think about that. He carried me a lot of my life. Yeah, I just didn't know it. Right. We have so much to be grateful for that so. uh, has led us up to where we are now in our lives. You know, if we would just spend days doing that. You know, our mornings or whatever, just every moment thank that you can, you yeah. can wash dishes and be grateful. Yeah, and and I I wonder now. My I look back at my life now, and I wonder if I had just trusted God, how much sooner would He have brought me to Greg? Yeah, I don't ever know. Right, Greg is the sweetest, kindest, best husband I could have ever dreamed of yeah and I think we both got pretty uh <laughs> pretty blessed instead of almost 25 years I might could be we could could maybe be nearing 45 years mm -hmm. 40 years yeah because when you finally get years. together I don't know if you and Greg recognized it but like for Michael and I, we saw several times throughout our life where we could have very easily brushed, you know, brushed past each other, you know, yeah. and um, I, yeah, you know. So well, I, I, I just, when we got married and moved up here, I'm like, you really weren't that far away from where I was living when I was up here with my ex. Yeah. I worked at a daycare center right there on, what is it, 50th and Meridian. Mm hmm He worked at Wiley Post at one point. Wow. Uh... If I had, instead of staying there in McAllister... 
I had the thought of, I should just go move to Oklahoma City just to get away from these surroundings, to get a change of scenery. Yeah. I don't want to go back to East Central because that's where Bill died. I don't want to be in McAllister because that was our home. I just need to escape. I need, maybe I should, and maybe that was God going, yes, you should. Right. Because I had a youth, uh, uh, there was an Assembly of God church up here mm -hmm. that my old youth pastor and his wife were youth pastors of yeah and that would have been familiar people i could have gone to church there yeah which happened to also be the church i had been at when i originally prayed at seven years old to receive christ Aww. it was a daycare center they had a daycare center that that's where i went oh be wow yeah <sighs> What would God have done yeah, if I had funny. just trusted him and not rebelled, thinking my whole world is over with? Yeah. I, have to, so the lesson in this is uh, to not be so rebellious or avoidance of things to, that come in our lives. To, to always, always, always keep our eyes on him. I have a saying now, and I know my kids are tired, get tired of hearing me say it, but even if I live under a bridge, oh, yeah. I'm still going to trust him. Yeah. Even if I don't have anything anymore, not even a grocery cart to push my stuff or what I have left around. If I'm just me walking by myself and I have nothing, even if I have to live under a bridge, I'm still going to trust him. I'm still going to stay with him. He's shown himself faithful. Yeah. He was through all my garbage. Yeah. He does go through all of our garbage, doesn't he? I don't want, and I don't want to fool myself as to think that I'm better than the Israelites ever were. Oh, no. Uh, yes, we're going to do what you say, yeah. and then turn around two seconds later and worship a calf. I want to be cautious enough to know that I'm still a human, yeah. and I can screw up, but... Is the intent of my heart to not ever walk away. Yeah. So. Well, when we start feeling that aloneness, we can know that he's there for us always. And he's blessed me. I'm, he's blessed me to to have Greg. And, and three of my kids that are following Yahweh. And so... And the beautiful grandchildren. Oh, 20 of them. Yeah. So. yeah. So, I just, I need to, I have learned to always keep my eyes on him. Air my junk if I have to, yelling by myself in the car. Yeah. And talk to him that way. And if that doesn't work, then he'll give me someone to, that I can talk to. Mm-hmm. And... He but I'm not ever us. going to, I don't want to ever walk away from him. And just, just take me out before that happens, God, if it's going to happen. Right. Just take me out now. Yeah. And, and, and I'm good. Yeah. I, I don't want to ever, if that's ever going to, if that's in my future, I, I just don't ever want to get there. I just, just take me out now so that, because my heart is, I want you. I want to always follow you. I don't want to screw up and lose lose my eyes focused off you and looking at the storm so bad that I drowned. Right. And yeah. I just don't think that's going to put me in a good place if, if that's the last thing I'm looking at is the storm instead of my eyes on him. Yeah, that's true. That is so. true. He always welcomes prayer and our company. Yeah, anytime. He doesn't, like he doesn't you said, whether we're doing dishes or whatever, I mean, he is there for us. He doesn't care if we're angry and upset. He can handle our angry and upset. Yeah. Even if we try and, even if, if, if some part of us, like I did, thinks he did it to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He can handle that. Just be honest and talk to him and he'll help you work through it. Yeah. Those are some of the best prayers, don't you think? I think like, so. I think, oh, really? I, I think the, the more, he already knows it anyway. Yeah. Why not truthful. be honest and truthful and Deal with it. And deal with it. Yeah. Because you can't deal with what you're sleeping under a rug and hiding from. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
Thank you so much. I know this has not been easy for you. And to uh -huh. bring it all out into the public like this, um, took a lot of courage and a lot of strength. And I, um, I appreciate you so much. I truly do. Uh -huh. You're a good woman. Uh -huh. Yeah. You got to learn to accept some compliments somewhere along the way because she, she's a, she is an incredibly awesome woman. And, um, I am very blessed to have her in my life and Michael is very blessed to have um, have him in your in his life is what I'm trying to say I'm too tore up to think straight so I'm sorry about that but um, you know there's times when we can walk away from God but know that he is always there and we're not alone and we need to return back to him and get his permission on some things so that we don't make those lifelong decisions that um, are are painful to us. Um, mistakes that we make that could have been avoided. Yeah. So, thank you again for coming. Folks, mm -hmm. just enjoy God's journey, okay? And we will see you again next week. Mm -hmm. Trying to get to my remote. <laughs> there it is. Thank you again for coming.